He's held the corner office in the Queen City for nearly eight years, and now he's looking to make it a full decade. Mayor Ted Gatzis launched his re-election campaign a few days ago, and he joins us this morning. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Make the case. Uh, why should voters rehire you for a fifth term? Well, I can tell you, you know, over the last eight years, there's been a lot of great things happening in the city of Manchester. We've built a great foundation, and I think that the program that Dean Kamen is bringing into the Milliard will be the exclamation point on the Milliard, and I want to be here to make sure that we support it and get the city to grow even better on the foundation that we already have. Let's rewind a little bit to the 2016 Republican primary for governor. You came in third. I believe that was the first time you had ever lost in an electoral setting. What did you learn from that experience? Well, I learned that, uh, you, you know, as uh, well as people know you in certain parts of the state. They don't know you throughout the entire state and certainly uh, we made an awful lot of good friends uh, throughout the entire state and I look forward to campaigning as hard as we did in that election because I don't think anybody worked any harder than we did uh, when we ran for governor and we worked pretty hard when we run for mayor. So we will continue that and move it forward. It was an all-out battle towards the end there. We'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about the campaign finance issue. Of course, the Attorney General's office determined you violated campaign finance law uh, by accepting uh, above the limit of contributions for a primary. That matter has been settled. You repaid the donors. But this could certainly come up as an issue in this race. What do you tell voters who are concerned about this? Well, again, you know, it was something that I told the folks that made their contributions that uh, if we didn't get past the primary, we would send the money back. So it was something that I understood that we were going to do. We didn't need the Attorney General to tell us to do it. We just might not have done it in a timely manner, but we were going to do it. You mentioned, uh, digging into some of the issues here in Manchester, you mentioned the mill yard and what Dean Kamen wants to do with the biotech industry. What can the city do specifically to help foster that as it starts to grow here? We have to make sure that economic development is a lot easier. You know, the planning board process sometimes can run into some very difficult times, and we've got to see if we can't get people on the planning board that understands that economic development is, is pivotal in this city, and we've got to do everything that we can to make it easier for a developer. If there's something has to be done and the developer comes in and they tell him, here are the 10 things, give him all 10 things at once so that he can do them, uh, and don't give him 10 and then have him come back in and there's five more behind it. Let's tell a developer exactly what they want done, and let's get it done because time is very important to a developer. It's money. The mill yard is so unique, so historic. Uh, when it's busy, traffic and parking can be a real issue. What are some of the solutions there if, if we're really going to see a major industrial boom there? What can be done with the infrastructure to make getting in and out of the mill yard a little easier? Well, I think that th there's no question that the mill yard is, is probably cl pretty close to capacity. And I think that the great thing that Army is going to bring to the city of Manchester that it's going to expand it into the Gaslight District. And it's going to see that part of the city grow. And you know, you can see that we're doing the streets. And that's very important. But I see that as the next portion of the city that's going to grow. Hmm. Manchester is still a ground zero in the fight against opioids and in the drug crisis. Your administration and community partners are doing a lot of work, but what is the plan moving forward and how do you measure progress uh, on this difficult issue? Well, you know, I can only tell you that Safe Station is a program that's being looked at nationally. Uh, the, they've come to me, they came to me a year ago and said, we think we have an idea that might work. And when I heard the idea, I said it's going to work because if people come to you looking for help on their own, then they're ready to move forward. And I think the most important thing is that other communities throughout this country are looking at it. People are coming in nationally to find out what we're doing for Safe Station. Over the last 12 months, we've had 2,000 people that have come into Safe Station. The most important thing that it's not only Manchester people. 65% of the people coming to Safe Station are from outside of Manchester, and we're helping them. Yeah, it, there is an element of fairness to this. Your Manchester is taking on, you know, we, we talk to people who come down from Berlin to access uh, this city service. Does the fire department need more resources to be able to make this work for, for the state, not just the city? Well, I think they're there and they do their job. And, and certainly I, I've, not, I've been talking to the chief and I'm in pretty close contact with them on a regular basis. The most important thing that we have to find now is housing. Uh, we've got the treatment section, we've got the folks coming in at Safe Station, we get them to treatment. We now have to find a place for them for housing because they come out of treatment at 4 o'clock and they have no place to go. And it's important that we find housing. We need probably 100 beds. Uh, again, because of drug court and the successes that they're having, 
they also need housing. So the issue now is all about housing. Yeah, these sober living settings, how, from a municipal standpoint, do you ensure that the people who create these sober living situations are on the up and up, that it's not a situation that will turn negative for the people who are going in there? Well, I think that you can only tell that as a matter of time. Uh, there's no way that you can prejudge somebody. I think that everybody is attempting to put their best foot forward, and you have to wait and see, and, and time will tell whether the folks are legitimate or not. But I think that somehow the state and the city has to get involved to find some safe housing for them. Should there be specific consequences, though, when you find someone who creates essentially a problem property that is plugging those people back into a negative situation rather than a positive one? I think if that comes forward, we'll be having discussions at the full board level and, and making sure that we do everything in our power to fix that. Education, uh, once again, will be a major issue likely in this race. Uh, is Manchester's school system better now than when you took office in 2010? Well. Let me just say, Adam, that I went to all four graduations uh, just a, a short time ago. And I can tell you that the two valedictorians in both the Central High School class and in the Memorial class had outstanding speeches. And they talked about the great education that they got in the Manchester School District. Both of them did. One's going to Harvard. One's going to uh, North Carolina Chapel. So I can tell you that it's important that we listen to the students because they'll tell us what's wrong and what's right and they're just talking about great things that happen in the city of Manchester educationally. The one thing we have to do, we must get it done in the next two years and that's redistricting. It has to be done so that we get classes that are available in the elementary schools so that we can reduce class size. That must be done and we have to find a way to get children out of the portables. You've said you want to rip the Band-Aid off when it comes to redistricting. What does that mean? Well, that, you know, there are a lot of people that come in and say, well, I bought my house to go to school there, and now all of a sudden you're moving us. And I, and I can appreciate that, and they're worried about their child, but children are more resilient than adults. You give them a couple of weeks, and they'll get into that new school, and they'll be right there having fun and learning. So we've got to make sure that we get the redistricting done, so that we can find a way to, to reduce the class sizes in the elementary schools. Panhandling is a problem that's been uh, rising up the priority list. Is there a solution that both passes constitutional muster and addresses uh, a serious public policy problem? Well, this has got to be a public-private partnership. We have to get the word out to folks in Manchester because people in the city are very kind. They will help people. But when they're handing them money, this does not help them. That ju this just forces a problem that's uh, very, very bad for the city of Manchester. So let's not pass out money to the panhandlers. Let's tell them to go get help at New Horizons or Families in Transition or other places that we have in this community. But let's not give them the money. And then the police have to do some enforcement. There's no question. Uh, we're talking about putting signs up. I've talked to the chief. You know, we've got to make sure that people understand that panhandling doesn't help the individual. And you know, when somebody tells the story, and Alderman told the story just the other night, that uh, somebody offered one of the panhandlers a job for $15 an hour, and he turned around and looked at the guy and says, why do I want to do that? I make more money doing this. So it's about making sure that the public understands, don't give them money. You mentioned bringing in the police department, though. What can a police officer do if someone is not breaking any laws or, or city ordinances? Well, there's a city ordinance that says that somebody in a car can't pass money through a window. So I think that, uh, you There's know, a lawsuit over that, though, though, right? I mean, that's in question? No, uh, no I don't. One? I think the, the problem was is that they went after the panhandler okay. and not the motorist. So we have to start talking to the motorist to make sure that they don't put their window down, give somebody money, have that person step off of that median because we now have... Uh, you know, a letter from the Department of uh, Works that says that the medians are part of the roadways. So we got to make sure that we're protecting everybody uh, that we have going forward when it comes to panhandling. And again, if we tell people and get the message out, don't give them money, they'll stop panhandling. Like it or not, this race is going to be viewed as something of a barometer for our national politics. We know that Manchester is a lot more complex than just red versus blue. But for voters who are out there, should they see Mayor Ted Gatsis as a strong supporter of President Donald Trump? 
Well, you know, I can't tell you and figure out what they do in Washington. I can only work on the things that we have here in Manchester, and we'll continue to do that, and we'll work on it. Uh, he's the President of the United States. I respect that position. And certainly, uh, if there's a way that I can talk to somebody to get funds into the city of Manchester, uh, it's certainly something that I will do. You won by 64 votes in 2015. It was an absolute triumph for your political ground game and your ability to turn out your voters here. But your opponents, looking at the trend, have narrowed that gap uh, in every election. How do you reverse that trend and, and win in this race? Well, we get out and make sure we have more voters come to the polls, and we got to talk to those voters. And, uh, you know, they can't sit there and say, well, we thought you were going to win, so we didn't go and vote. We've got to get everybody out. We're putting together a pretty good team. We've got a great finance team right now. Uh, we're putting together our, <coughs> excuse me, our ward captains. And we're going to grow those as the, the summer progresses. And likely more sign locations than ever, I'm More sure. sign <laughs> locations and, and certainly getting people involved. All right. Mayor Ted Gatsis, we definitely appreciate you coming in, and uh, certainly we'll be talking to you more as this race goes on. Thank All right. You. Adam, thank you. Much appreciated. Have a great day.